Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here because I'm going to be participating in the History Challenge, which is a readathon focused on nonfiction history books. I first heard about this from Justin at Ghost Reader. I looked through the bingo board and thought that some of the prompts were really great and really spoke to the kinds of nonfiction that I like to read. Therefore, I've compiled a stack of things that I already had on my TBR that would work for this readathon. It's a two week long readathon. I'll leave all the details down below of who's hosting it and what the prompts are if you're interested. It starts this Monday, so when you're watching this, it's probably already begun. So I kind of wrote down what the prompts were for the bingo board. I'll tell you what I picked for each one. For the first bingo board prompt, it's contemporary history, which I really love that contemporary was still a part of this because that's kind of what the most fascinating aspects of history are for me are basically the 1960s to now. So when I look at contemporary history, I'm thinking like in the past 10 years or so, and that's what I'm trying to focus this on. Um, so I picked a few books. One of them is Political Junkies, which I've had out from the library for a bit now. So this is all about talk radio and Twitter, basically how alternative media has shaped the way that we consume politics now. Um, and it looks interesting. Another one that's contemporary history is Sexual Citizens, which is a landmark study of sex power and assault on campus. And it does have first person accounts of people who this has affected. This one doesn't have an audiobook and this one is only available as an Audible exclusive, which means I can't get it. So these are two that I haven't been prioritizing because I have to actually read them with my eyes. So I'm going to attempt to do that these two weeks. Think of me because it's hard for me to really get momentum. The next challenge is local history. For this one, I started looking into um, Colorado history because that's what's local to me now, but nothing really called to me and there's one book that I've already had on um, my mind as one that I want to read, um, especially by the end of the year because it was on my five-star TBR prediction and it's local history to Florida, which used to be local to me, local history as to where I grew up. So I'm going to be reading Devil in the Grove for that one and this is about a civil rights case. And sometimes I feel like when we talk about civil rights history we forget that so many of these things actually happened in Florida as well and Florida seems so modern but really it's it's not. So I'm excited to read this and I believe Thurgood Marshall was the person who was um, the lawyer for this case so that makes me excited. The next prompt is historical fiction. For this one I picked a book that I've had for a bit now and it's Boxers um, by Jean Luang Yang. This is the first part in his duology. Um, this is a graphic novel and it's focused in 1898 in China so it is historical fiction and I'm going to read it finally. Literally have had it out since before the pandemic started. Then and the next prompt is different countries history and I'm combining this one with country on a different continent. I'm going to try to read Arab of the Future 2 and this is looking into the 1980s, probably mostly focused on France and Syria. The next prompt is your favorite time period. For sure my favorite time period, like I said, is uh, post-World War II history, specifically the civil rights history. I'm going to be reading Deep Delta Justice for this. I have the book here. Here's the book, and I also got an advanced listener's copy from Libra FM that I haven't gotten to, so I'm hoping to get to that one in these next two weeks. The prompt after that is woman author, which I could satisfy with many of the books that I have here, so I haven't picked something out specifically for it. The next one after that is ancient history. I think I'm completely not going to think about this one. I don't read a lot of ancient history. It's not a time period that I super energizes me. Maybe one day I will read more of it. Same for macro or multidisciplinary history. I have a really hard time looking at subjects with that kind of a time frame and whenever I read books that take into account like hundreds of years of history, uh, it's hard, okay? I could also think about it in a different way, multidisciplinary. What this prompt tells me to do is to look at something really wide lens and I much rather look at things from really short lens. So I didn't pick anything for this one specifically. I also didn't pick anything for host favorite history books. I've only watched Justin's video so I think I'm gonna pass on this though I need to go watch the other host videos to see which are their favorites. The next prompt is a memoir biography or autobiography and this is the one that I had like the most things to pick from. I'm currently reading two but I'm, I'll probably be done with them by tomorrow so I'm currently reading a mind spread out on the ground and I am like 20 pages from finishing it. This one 
is a collection of essays, but it is autobiographical in nature. I'm also reading um, Memorial Drive, which I'm almost done with. I only have an hour left of the audiobook. I probably will be done with these by then, so I'm not going to think about them. The other two that could work for this include The Body Papers, which is another collection of essays, I believe, and it looks at family history, especially in the 1970s, is what I saw when I was <laughs> looking up information about it. I also have They Called This Enemy by George Takei, which I've had out for a bit, and this is looking at him growing up and um, being forced to go to internment camps in the United States. Then the next prompt is History of a Social Issue. For this one, I'm going to be reading, or attempting to read <laughs> once again, because I've had this book out before, The Color of Law. The audiobook is almost ready for me. This looks into segregation from, you know, a policy standpoint, and I think this will work with Revisit a School Topic, which is one of the last prompts on the bingo card, um, because that's something that I studied a lot for my history degree in college. As for a black indigenous person of color author, I'm not picking anything just because the things that I have selected, the majority of them are by people of color, including this one and this one and this one. For myth or folklore, the only one I could think that could be interesting for me that I already have on me is Strange Rites, which is a look at um, religion and how religions of past has really led to the movements, like spiritual movements of people who are not necessarily religious, but they are spiritual. And I have the audiobook from Libro FM. Like I said, country on a different continent. I'm going to read Arab of the Future 2, which I need to get from the library. As for a micro history, I thought I could read, which I checked out from the library a week or so ago. And it's thank you for voting, uh, the past, present, and future of voting. So it's looking specifically at voting history and voting rights. Um, this is the Young Readers edition. I saw it while I was fluffing my uh, collection. So I thought it would be interesting for me to read this one. For a revisit school topic, um, I'm going to try The Color of Law, like I mentioned, for history of a social issue. So that's it for the bingo board. I also wanted to mention that I finally got my copy of The Warmth of Other Suns in the mail. I tried reading this, I started reading it um, with a library copy, and I I couldn't get through all of this in the time that I had it out from the library and there are so many people on hold for it because so many people are wanting to educate themselves at the moment which is great um, but I thought this could be one that I could buy for myself. I also thought that it'd be a good idea to buy it for myself so that I could um, highlight and write all over the text because I already had like the inkling and the want to do that with the library copy so that's another reason why I decided to purchase it. So I'm going to start it during these two weeks. I don't think think based on it being 500 pages and not having an audiobook that I'm going to finish it in the two weeks um, but I'm really excited about this and I wanted to mention it because it would fit this history challenge very well as well. So that is it for the books that are kind of on my mind possibly for this readathon. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or if you'd like to read any of them. Once again make sure you check out all the links down below um, if you want to participate and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!